G'day YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It is Foul Play here and we're back for some modern action. It's been about a year since I've touched modern in the format. Um, I think it's been in a pretty average place, honestly, for at least um, when Modern Masters 2 came out and Wizards stopped policing and stopped banning and things like that and decided to stop content creating uh, pretty much altogether. Seven months later, you know, returned. Lots of pauper, lots of good stuff. It's been pretty successful, pretty enjoyable for me. Um, so the channel's actually unlocked community posts now, which is fantastic. It means I can get everyone's opinion on things. Um, and as a little bit of a celebration, we're going to go back to the grassroots and we're going to play some modern. Um, so thank you for everyone that's voted on the polls so far that I've posted. Um, looks like a lot of you are following Pauper currently, which makes sense because that's what I've been uh, streaming. Um, but then there was uh, more people following Modern than Pioneer. And it being the format I'm most familiar with is what we're going to do a video on. Additionally, the poll was split between whether or not I played Green, White or Bant. So I figured I'd go back to Bant, my real grassroots, my real favorite niche of the deck that we really designed to be a powerhouse in the format, mostly thanks to cards like Force of Negation. Um, all right, so the deck today, we have got a couple of Asajus in the land base. Other than that, it's pretty similar to what I've been running um, prior to when I stopped playing um a play set of mana confluence a whole bunch of fetch lands and then like one of hallowed fountains breeding pools uh two temple gardens and uh a rainbow of one basics um all right so as for the creatures uh we've got the eight one mana hexproof creatures they're staples they're going nowhere in the two mana slot however we have got two core spirit dancers one floofy pause, although this is just a fluffy pause at the moment. I have not uh, got the fancy artwork. And uh, one of Lavinia in the main deck as well. I think this card could be pretty strong, particularly in bogey matchups like Hammer Time. Um, additionally, when your opponents are trying to evoke cards, cast force and negations for their um, alternate costs, things like that, could come in handy in the main deck. So... Aura-wise, space was limited, uh, so we have actually got a bit of a rainbow of stuff going on. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, Floofy Paws, when an aura enters the battlefield under your control, you may search your library for an aura with a mana value equal to or less than that aura, but a different name to auras you control on the battlefield. So on the off chance that we get our one-off Floofy Paws happening, um, we'll be able to search out random stuff. So um, at two mana, we've got three of Daybreak Coronet, three of Staggering Insight, and one of Alpha Authority. Alpha Authority giving that Hexproof. Um, at the one mana, we've got playsets of Ethereal Armor, Rancor, and Curious Obsession. So we can do that whole aggressive thing that the Bogle deck loves to do. Uh, three of Hyena Umbra and a two of Aqueous Form. So Aqueous Form gives that square one upon attacking and also unblockable. Um, additional notes, uh, some of your auras and creatures can be pitched to Force of Negation. So... Lavinia, Bogle can be pitched, along with Staggering Insight, Curious Obsession, and Aqueous Form. So we've got plenty of targets there. Uh, as a result, we should do things like sequence our Glade Cover Scout before Slippery Bogle. If we have the two in an opening hand, just off the off chance, we draw one of these. Okay, so looking at the sideboard, uh, I'm going to go for Permission in the form of Stubborn Denial. Um, since we stopped playing, right, Counterspell... Pretty prying force in the metagame. We want to be able to resolve our auras through counterspell. So being able to do turn three, hold up sub and denial while casting an aura seems pretty strong to me. Um, so hopefully we don't see too much evoke elementals, but if we do, we've got our torpor orbs ready and raring to go. Obviously, Urian was banned um, as part of that money pile deck, but I'm sure it's still going to be very, very strong without the companion. Uh, we've got the second Lavinia, going to be particularly useful against Living End and Tron decks, I guess other Cascade decks as well, um, and other decks trying to cheat on mana. Uh, we've got a one of Gadok Teague in there, it can be handy against Tron, but also Zero's Control. Anything that's running Prismatic Ending is really good to uh, remove their ability to cast Prismatic Ending in Exile Auras. We have got Subtlety, so Subtlety, a bit of an all-star. Um, 
Gets to temper your opponent a little bit. Very, very good against Amulet Titan. And Force of Vigor. This is going to be pretty impressive. It's obviously very, very strong against Hammer Time. It also has application against Titan and a little bit against Burn with that Eidolon of the Great Rebel. This has been one hell of a long introduction. Let's get into the gameplay. Okay, match number one. Off to a good start. We have won the die roll here. First in quarter, and they are on an Obosh deck. Um... So likely, what, mono-red sort of stuff, um, with Obosh as a companion, could also be Ponza as well. Sand looks very strong, maybe less strong into Ponza, less strong into Blood Moon, but there's definitely a lot of good stuff going on, which I'm down, down with. Um, as well guys, if you are like keen to see uh, Pioneer or see me play modern with green white something like that let me know down in the comment section um really do appreciate that sort of feedback it's very useful to me opponent ragavan no attacks so i was wanting to go staggering inside but we're not going to be able to attack with that one so we go rancor plus hyena umbra i guess like turn three daybreak's also pretty good um yeah there is a there is potential for me to make content like that Potentially like a monthly thing or something. I think I think the main focus I want with the channel is going to be pauper. Um, I think it's just a less volatile format. All right, so opponent finds rancor. They have the option to cast it. They go for three mana. Season pyromancer. I mean, this seems fine by me. Uh, basically, we resolve daybreak coronet. Um, it seems very very rare that we'd lose from there. Opponent pitches fury ragavan. To the antics. Fortunately, this blue manor is going to be unusable. But, I mean, Daybreak's pretty incredible. So, we'll get happening. Um, very strong position from here. Alright, opponent plays Relic. Not really that relevant. Exiles the graveyards to draw a card. Five cards in hand. One mana up for turn. Obviously, uh, no real great attacks. I mean, Ragavan's a very free block. Is this just like scoop or do we have a second Ragavan? I mean, you dealt negative damage there. We, we gained four life out of that exchange. Synthesizer. Sure. Finds Blast on. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's a terrifying one. All right. So if we got to next turn, we could Staggering Insight so that if our opponent activates Blast Zone, Totem Armor triggers here. Rancor goes to the grave and we keep our Daybreak on our creature. Alright, so I could look up a list, but Monored or Bosch, so things we've got to look out for, obviously Blast Zone, which we just saw. Um, additionally, Blood Moon, Engineered Explosives, uh, or perhaps Ratchet Bomb. So we've already got our Force Negations in, which are good. We're probably going to want to bring in some number of Force of Vigor as well. Um, two to three, I think, is the right number. I don't see me wanting any of my other real cards. Maybe Subtlety has play, but that's overboarding at that point, in my opinion. Um, Lavinia seems a little bit weak, so that's an easy board decision out. Um, opponent does have a lot of tokens, so Aqueous Form seems reasonable, but maybe we'll just go one copy. Uh, we still have Rancor to help trample some damage over the top of them. And I guess like Alpha Authority is maybe a little bit weak too. So opponent miles to six. We're going to do the same. Um, for you, those of you that aren't aware, Dried Arbor is green. Can be pitched to Force of Vigor <clears throat> uh, through Blood Moon as well. All right, this sound seems pretty good. Opponent mulling to five. We'll keep ours. Um, I'll throw Core Spirit Dancer away. We can resolve Staggering Insight. Um, Daybreak Coronet might be a bit harder because we might get hit by Blood Moon. We'll see. No turn one creature for the opponent. I guess, um, oh wow, it's a really good find. So, lead on Temple. Play at our Scout. All right, opponent with the old ratchet bomb. Hey, look, we got it beside you. I like beside you. Also, we have Slippery Bogle. Um, wonder how we want to sequence this. Guess we attack for one. We like staggering insight, attack, trigger the activation next turn, 
Bogle Staggering Insight replaced by one card. Um, the only thing I don't like about this line is it does ramp our opponent, which I'm not a massive fan of, but uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this Ratchet Bomb. Hopefully that's all they had. They did Mulligan to five. All right, so opponent uh, slams down that Blast Zone. Sad times. Uh, all right, so I guess we go ahead... We start trying to get rid of what our opponent is doing, so we're staggering inside. We'll attack. They'll inevitably inevitably blow up. All right, they just blow up in response. Sure thing. We can play Bogle. Hopefully, we draw Aura next turn. As long as it's like a blue or a green Aura, we can then Daybreak Coronet. Oh, another Blast Zone. Like, okay. All right, well, we're drawing all lands. I'm going to concede going to game three. Now, major regret for not having Pithing Needle in the sideboard. Um, I mean, Alpha the Authority could be good as a Daybreak Enabler through Blast Zone. Uh, it's probably a bit narrow. Alright, let's just uh, resubmit. I think we're at a good point with our spells. Opponent Mono Blast Zones. Uh, this hand's really good. We'll keep. It's a little bit weak to Blast Zone. Um... We're getting early turn two Curious Obsession plus Rancor. And we have Force Negation back up. So as we are talking about before, lead on the scout because Bogle can be pitched to Force. And opponent on a Mulligan to six there. Alright, so opponent, Den of the bug, Doug Bear, Bug Bear. I can't talk. Um, Alright, well this, this is pretty good. Core Spirit Dancer, a great draw. If our opponent does manage to get to a Blast Zone, we'll be able to reload with Rancor on the Core Spirit Dancer, so that's pretty nice. Drawing another Force. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Could be a Chalice on one here. Could be a little bit annoying. Synthesizer. I mean, I don't care about that card. I might care about what it reveals, but uh, we'll go with this for now. Oh, finds Blood Moon. Goodbye, Blood Moon. Find Force of Vigor. Okay, so we're just in a really strong spot. Start by attacking. Look to draw a card. Excuse me. Probably a second main Spirit Dancer. Find Ethereal Armor. I feel like Ethereal uh, Spirit Dancer just gets like bolted away. Let's uh, hold off. Opponent, three mana, cracks a th synthesizer, finds a land, gets a samurai token. We untap. Hey, look, that's a really good combination of auras. <laughs> All right, so we can put our opponent to either two or four, depending on if they block or not. Uh, Blast Zone can do really good things for them. We can reload on Spirit Dancer afterwards, though. Hopefully we hit land here. Uh, we do not hit land. All right. All right, there's the old Nemesis. Opponent on four life. Blast Zone comes down. Can't counter that with Force Negation. All right, so we'll force our opponent's hand. We'll go to attacks. Opponent cashing in. So now we can reload with Hyena Umbra, which seems pretty strong. It's a reasonable top deck. Alright, opponent plays Rampant Ruins. Rampant Ruins, not Blast Zone. So um, if it's a creature they play, we just double Rancor, attack, likely win. Um, if it's a Blood Moon, I mean, that's pretty good for us, right? All right, opponent plays out Chandra. We'll uh, we'll just go ahead and counter this. Give our opponent like no outs here. One mana available. They know about the Rancor in hand. Lightning bolt face. Uh, sure. All right. So just an attack for lethal and happy days. All right, game one off to a really good start. Let's get on to match number two. All right, match number two, the Magic Dogs, Magic Gods love us. We're versing Nimzo, won the die roll on the play. Hand is looking very nice. We'll keep it. All right, so decision here is um, 
Mana Confluence costs us an extra life, but if we draw our second blue source, we can double Curious Obsession next turn. I think that's probably worth it. Um, go ahead, scout. Okay, opponent Scalding Tarn and pass. So I guess we'll kick it off with Rancor, see how an opponent responds. My goodness, talking is difficult. It has been like one heck of a long week. I'm shooting this on the um, Thursday Australian time. So Thursday night, probably Thursday morning for everyone over in America. So both our spells resolve and we just get in, get our card draw. Seems good to me. Um, set our yields. Find Core Spirit Dancer. Yeah. M liking everything I see so far. This seems like so strong right now. All right, opponent, Zutor is Proving Ground, so that is Jun Colors. Uh, we now see Steam Vents. And no response from nothing else from our opponent after that. They don't have Counterspell Manor up. This is Diabolic Edict main deck. Ice, tap a permanent. Okay, sure. Hey, we find Temple Garden. Let's go, team. So, unfortunately, our opponent did <laughs> shut off our second Curious Obsession, so a little angry about that, a little happy about attacking for seven, putting our opponent to six, drawing a card, play out our second Burgle for, like, diabolic edict purposes, right? It's that easy. Our opponent concedes. Um, so it's possible living end after seeing Fire and Ice. I'm not really sure, though. Uh, the other possibility is... Evoke Elementals. Um, I think I'm going to lean on the side of assuming our opponent is on Living End. Um, Lavinia is like pretty good there, right? Um, after that, I guess like Torpor Orbs is semi-reasonable, but better on the play. Uh, so just bring in Lavinia and I might minus a Core Spirit Dancer. Maybe it's like supposed to be Fluffy Paws. Not entirely sure. When it snaps up there, seven, we'll be going to six. And uh, no lander. All right, we'll be going to five. Uh, I guess we keep this, but hey, it's really bad. We can't cast a single aura in our hand. Um, it's pretty awful. We did Giant Arbor. I think we did Aqueous Form. See what happens. Hopefully we draw a fetch land, can fetch out Hallowed Fountain, and then go to town. All right, opponent Scalding Tarn and passes to us. We find Curious Obsession, which, I mean, isn't great help so far. All right, so opponent Arid Mesa and pass. Um, I mean, this is awkward, but what can you do? I, I, I'm not sure if a four-card hand, hand would have been better. Maybe we could have found something castable with Curious Obsession as well, so we could reload our hand, but this feels a little bit unlucky on the draw. Two draws, not hitting a land. All right, opponent is going to do some description of action now. So they fetch up the mountain, play the Renin 6. This Renin 6 gets plussed. Opponent never missing a land drop again this game, most likely. Any help from our deck? Temple Garden. All right, well, that is actually something. So, Haina Umbra. So we check... Uh, keep Ronin 6 in check. Our opponent is pretty far from dying. Spell Pierce. Uh, lame. We'll still attack Ronin 6. At the moment, like, it's likely a concession. I want to find out more about our opponent's deck. Alright, so Dwarven Mine. Indomitable Creativity. We know what they're about now. Alright, we'll concede. Okay, so indomitable creativity. So we see nature's claim here, destroy an artifact or enchantment uh, beside you. They've got Veil of Summer potentially for against our force of negation, which is frustrating. Uh, collective brutality is not that big. Dress down could be annoying. Um, doesn't look like they run any creatures other than cruel, uh, Archon of Cruelty, but if they run like a Fury or something, they might be able to dress down, evoke Fury, etc. Okay. Uh, Leyland Binding is good information for us, though. And uh, Fabled Mirror. Yeah, I guess that's pretty strong, too. 
So I'd say it's most likely here that we probably want to get rid of our Lavinia. We'll efficiency swap in the Gadok Teague, and then Stubborn Denial is probably going to be pretty strong too. Uh, we could Torpor Orb. That will buy us one turn of like ETB from Archon. Um, it will probably take us a turn to cast, so it really is not accomplishing much. Um, our opponent's not got much in the way of blockers, so I guess we'll mi minus Aqueous Form, jump into the match. We could be a little light on blue sources here for Alphon. Uh, Alright, well, well that, that's a mulligan. Uh, this is a mulligan too. Let's hope for a really good five. If there's a deck that can come back from it, it is the Bant variant with um, Curious Obsession. Opponent keeping a seven. Hey, look, we have a capable hand. We'll ditch Rancor. Um, there's potential to ditch double Rancor. I might actually pitch Temple Garden here. Um, get a little bit greedy on our auras. Rancor off is a good clock. Um, get extra help with our card draws. Alright, opponent, Scalding Tarn. Land? Land, please? <laughs> so what we have to be a little bit worried about is Spell Pierce, I suppose. Uh, I'm gonna, like, keep them honest and make them have it. It's also really good if we draw land off Curious Obsession, so... Opponent cracking in response, which can only mean bad things. <laughs> Alright, and the Shock, and the Spell Pierce, and, I mean... Nothing too exciting for us there. We'll attack for one. Look to Rancor next turn. Alright, opponent land pass. Stubborn Denial is the draw for turn. I guess we continue to uh, pressure our opponent. Bait out these counter spells. Alright, opponent's got like 300 spell pierces, so that's tops. Get in there for one point of damage. Maybe. <laughs> um... That, all that being said, we do have really good protection against Indomitable Creativity. So if we draw enough resources to drain our opponent's counter magic, uh, we can then establish a pretty reasonable game plan. Alright, opponent third mountain and passing to us. Let's continue. Let's attack for one. I guess we try and get Octeague. So Gadok Teague could be weak to Lightning Bolt or Fire and Ice. It doesn't look like they have Counter Spell specifically. Um, let's play around our blue stuff. Maybe, maybe I'm not supposed to play this out here. Maybe I'm supposed to let my opponent go for Creativity, counter it, and then resolve Gadok Teague on the following turn. So I think maybe this is a missed sequence on our part. So Teague resolves, and is there a bolt? Prismari command, two damage to him, and opponent loots two. So yeah, we did walk into this a little bit. I think that was incorrect. Maybe even after deciding it was incorrect, after shocking, I just passed the turn to the opponent. Um, let stuff happen. Here we get a buy on Force of Negation if they do go for it. Uh, they have been using their spell pierces to counter our two starting hand auras, so maybe not. Abundant Growth resolves. Alright, there comes Dwarven Mind. And is that Fabled Mirror Breaker? I'm not fussed about Fabled Mirror Breaker. We really want to see an aura here though. So we don't get completely destroyed by these uh, rubbish tokens. Daybreak Coronet. <laughs> Thank you, Duck. <laughs> Alright, opponent, Mirror Breaker Trigger gets to loot two. <laughs> this is just incredible value. Comes the Renin Six. Like, on the plus side, this is semi playable because our opponent has not played. Um, are beside you yet, right? If they start reoccurring beside you, we're just dead. I only gets like treasure tokens off the attack trigger. That's very strange. <laughs> Seems like unnecessary text. Come on, man. Um, also, I don't see it uh, worth 
while trying to battle the Renin Six there. I mean, we draw Glade Cover Scout, like, we're drawing our entire wrong half of our deck in the worst order imaginable. This this isn't even a deals damage trigger. This is an attacks trigger. <laughs> How unreasonable. <laughs> Alright, opponent. Another Fabled Mirror Breaker. More antics hitting the battlefield. Two cards in hand. Rain and Six returning land. Bloodstained Maya the target. Opponent attacking with a few things. Alright, more treasure tokens, more damage. If we can resolve like Daybreak Coronet, we're in a good spot, so. We'll chill for now. Find Rancor. Uh, the annoying thing is we can't Rancor. Rancor takes us to six off the mana confluence, then we get attacked for eight. Um well, that's not good. All right, we'll go ahead and concede this one. GG opponent. I don't think that's a showing of how the matchup should go personally. I think we made our opponent look good by stumbling, by not drawing any auras. We obviously mulliganed to five. We had the counter magic interaction. They didn't go for the uh, combo with the creativity. They just went for their value cards instead. Um, but, you know, if we... And draw a little bit better, it can be a very different story. Okay, match number three. Finally, we lost a die roll. Opponent uh, Fellish, and they are keeping their seven card hand. They're on the play. And a mulligan this, it doesn't have a hexproof guy. Spirit Dance is a little bit weak. All right, this is looking pretty decent. I think we ditch on Island here. Keep the hand. Opponent, Spire Bluff Canal, Ragavan. Looks like we're versing, is it Murktide? Uh, Mish's Bobble played out now, which means they probably don't have Ledger Shredder in hand. Alright, opponent, Bobble Trigger. Sees Temple Garden. We'll play out our Temple Garden. We will keep our blue stuff secret for now. All right, opponent island attacks. I guess like this is a pretty big read on counter spell. Treasure token doing its stuff. Could be potential for them to play um, the Dragon's Rage channel, all right? All right, so Rancor is probably our weakest aura in hand. So I'm going to go ahead and bait our opponent with a counter spell on the Rancor. I'm not showing land yet. I want them to counter spell this. Okay, curiosity. So I think they put Consider into the Graveyard with Curiosity. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and Ethereal Armor here. See if there's a response. Now they Consider. So we resolve Ethereal Armor. We have the op option to attack or not. I think at this point we're currently winning the race. That could change if Dragon's Rage Channeler hits the battlefield. Um, opponent 3 instance or Sorceries in the Graveyard. So yes, attacking in, evening up those life totals, ignoring the Raghavan. Alright, opponent with the third consider. Uh, it would be astonishing if we did not see Dragon's Rage, uh, sorry, didn't see Murktide Regent next turn. Mm -mm. Ledger Strider to the grave. Okay. What a war uh, from the opponent. First things first, opponent attacks, uh, triggers, find staggering insight. Hey, look, the jig's up. They know we're on blue. Awkward. Uh, I think if they have Merc Tide, they're just supposed to go for Merc Tide, though. Dragon's Rage, Channeler. It's, uh, five instants and sorceries. I think they can still Merc Tide here. Okay, opponent staggering insight on the Dragon's Rage Channeler for that lifelink uh, on the flying creature. That's kind of terrifying. Find the scout. Uh, scout's annoying. Scout sucks. We can beside you the staggering insight. That's interesting. Um, I think we're supposed to play beside you, play core spirit dancer, and then curious obsession draw trigger. So Spirit Dancer resolves, Curious Obsession. 
resolves. Uh, no real help on the curious obsession there. I guess we don't want to fast skip the turn. Although, wait, wait, no, this is our turn three. We played land for turn, so we can fast skip through. Attacking for seven, trying to keep some kind of... Uh, <laughs> Some kind of pressure on our opponent. Hold the phone. He's attacking with Dragon's Rage Channeler. Is he not familiar with First Strike? Hey, that's awesome. I'll take that. We trample. We draw a card. It's really good for us. <laughs> I mean... Maybe he just didn't understand trample. It's very odd. Opponent attacks with Raghavan. There's the option to block. Uh, I don't think we want to take that option... Just take the damage, treasure token, windswept heath in exile. At least our opponent's thinning the top of our library of rubbish cards for us. Um, Slippery Bogle getting close to lethal if we hit like Runner Runner Aura off of like Draw Step Spirit Dancer. It's really good. <laughs> uh, not quite Runner Runner Aura, so we'll attack. Potential to put our opponent to five. Four cards in our opponent's hand. We will get that draw trigger happening. All right, so understandably, no blocks from the opponent this time round. Always yes. Always yield. Oh, find an ethereal armor. Hello. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Um, we're definitely going to throw down on ethereal. Our opponent, consider Surveil. Two cards there. Um, I think this one's in the bag. Okay, opponent Surveils to the top of their library. <laughs> Glade Cover Scout getting countered. Oh, this is very, very awkward opponent. <laughs> Little did they know. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to kick it off by... Throwing down on the Spirit Dancer here. Find Staggering Insight. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Uh, is there a world where we... If we Staggering Insight here, we're dead to Dragon's Rage Channeler attack plus double bolt. I think we leave it in hand. Of course, that double bolt would require them to have mountain in hand as well. So, yeah, th three of their four cards would have to be red mana and lightning bolt, lightning bolt. Opponent, expressive iteration. Oh, it's a little too late for that one, opponent. A little too late. Let's see what they yield. So, Dragon's Rage Channel is Veil Trigger on top of Library. Opponent concedes the match. Dude, this this uh, modern game's not that hard after all. This seems pretty good. Alright, so cards to be worried about from our opponent. Uh, Flusterstorm, uh, Dress Down, and I think that's really about it. Maybe Mystical Dispute comes in as well. So basically a counter magic sweep from the opponent. We know about main deck Blood Moon, so that's reasonable information to have. Um, yeah, this is interesting. I think we take Force of Negation out. Or at least I think we take it out on the play. On the draw, it might be better to keep in because of Blood Moon. Um, I think Stubborn Denial to try and resolve our spells might be a better place to be because they're going to be holding up counter magic for our auras now. Um, Force of Vigor for Blood Moon, Subtlety for Merktide. I think maybe Subtlety in for Lavinia is a good initial swap. So we'll bring in our Stubborn Denial. I think we'll minus on Aqueous Form. After that, it's a bit questionable. I might take out Alpha Authority and submit that list. We could be a little bit overboarded here. Hopefully not. Good old no aura hand, so we're going to be throwing back. Alright, this looks like one million times better, so we're going to keep this one. Opponent's also mulligan to six, so that's kind of good for us. Um, Alright, so keep. Choice to ditch land or ditch... An aura here. Um, I th 
sorry, ditch land or ditch force of negation. I think we ditch force of negation. I think having a little bit of blood moon assurance in the planes is good. I don't think we want to take insane amounts of damage from our own land base. Maybe we keep force, we ditch the temple garden. Because we can't guarantee staggering insight without painting with a shock and a mana confluence trigger. Alright, maybe I misplayed our lands. Alright, opponent Misha's Bobble targeting us, surveil, Archmage's Charm to the bin, finds beside you, so they know about the beside you. Um, I think beside you stays in hand, I think we mana confluence, I, I, I think I've uh, done this one slightly wrong guys, apologies. <laughs> Give you a modern everyone. Uh, so subtlety on our Glade cover scout. I mean, that's going to have to go top. We don't have a choice. Uh, what do they pitch to the subtlety? Brazen Borrower. And they're immediately casting spells on their turn. So we have a chance to resolve our Glade cover scout. Engineered Explosives. Oh, man. It's a huge shame we do not have Hyena Umbra in hand. Because they don't have two mana, two explosives. Opponent attacks. And if we'd have bottomed the temple garden right, um, we can blow this up. Yeah, okay. So we're just set to blow up engineered explosives in our opponent's end step. But yeah, if we'd um, have bottom the temple garden, kept the force of negation, we could have count counted engineered explosives. But then we'd be left with just daybreak in hand, which is pretty sketchy. All right, our life total is getting pretty low. <laughs> Little terrifying, not gonna lie. What a draw. <laughs> All right. Play out a scout. See if there's a response from the opponent. Consider. Okay. Oh, no. Have I just tapped my mana all wrong here and we can't resolve staggering insight off the back of consider? It's heartbreaking. All right. So Temple Garden in tapped. We'll look to Staggering Insight next turn. If we draw a white or blue source, we can Staggering Insight plus Daybreak. Opponent, three cards in hand, hopefully running out of gas. Expressive Iteration. Okay. Not too bad. I'm sure which way it shows us the exiled card here. All right. So Fiery Islet was exiled. He's played it. Opponent attacks for three. Two mana up for, for example, counter spell. But you think they would hold counter spell up into scout if they had it in the previous turn? Looks like a chunky Merc Tide. All right, so white mana could really do us a massive, massive servitude here. <clears throat> Gives us a five five. That might not even be big enough. Holy smokes! <laughs> mm. Oh god, we're one point short. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, let's not show our opponent anything else. We're dead to their nine power in the air. So information of Magus of the Moon over Blood Moon makes Force of Vigor slightly worse. It wasn't in our deck anyway. Um, so that's not too bad for us. Um, I think Stubborn Denial is still reasonable. I think we just run it back. Maybe subtlety is a little bit weak, and we bring back in Lavinia, because we know our opponent's playing subtlety too. Sure. Um, I think this is a keep. <laughs> It's like super greedy, but we have two creatures, one of which is probably our best creature in this position because she tutors auras. Did we remove Alpha Authority? We did. That's annoying. We can't give Hexproof. We can get it out of Lightning Bolt range, though. That's going to be really strong, too. All right. I 
think we start with deck thinning. Opponent plays the Dragon's Rage Channeler. Alright, so we crack. Got Hallowed Fountain. Um, I don't think we're playing around Magus of the Moon this game. Let's play into it. Alright, Floofy Paws down first. If that dies, we can go in on Lavinia. I guess maybe they have subtlety anyway. Alright, well, it resolves. Reasonable start. Alright, opponent. Cashing in their Lightning Bolt. We're going to cross our fingers. We're going to hope for mana this turn so we can creature... Wait, 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 wait. What am I doing? I should be force negating this. Okay, shit. Just in time. Holy smokes. Oh, wait. I think I threw the wrong aura away. I think it's Lavinia. Shit. My bad. Um, that was really loose. I was panicked because I just uh, was about to skip through turn. I guess throwing away Curious Obsession doesn't really matter because we can tutor off our other auras. Um, all right. So this seems pretty bonkers. Uh, we'll kick it off. Hyena Umbra trigger. Hopefully this resolves and then we'll be really, really good. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. I am so keen for this fluffy, uh, floofy pause to do its thing. This is amazing. All right. So rancor in hand, ethereal armor in hand. I guess we can just be like extremely, extremely aggressive here. <laughs> this is filth. Double ethereal armor. We'll get another Rancor next turn as well. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we'll attack for 13 on now turn 3. <laughs> awesome. Alright, opponent goes to 3 life. They're cracking that fetch land. Um... They've got one artifact in the graveyard. Here comes Consider. Here comes Surveil. <laughs> Holy smokes. This is freaking epic. <laughs> so opponent puts Consider into their graveyard. Or maybe it was Expressive Iteration. Um, the chat was saying they put Consider into their graveyard. So unsure. Maybe they surveilled Expressive Iteration to the graveyard. Trying to get a chunky ass Merc Tide on the board. Merktide's not going to be enough. Dress down plus Lightning Bolt, obviously not enough either. <laughs> and with that, the opponent concedes. Good old Floofy Paws getting in there. <laughs> Turn 3 attack for 13. That is insane. And to think, if we had one more land, we could have gone Rancor plus, um, plus a Curious Obsession. So that's another 3... Um, that's another 7 damage. That would have been literally been an attack for 20. Okay, match number 4, everyone. Won the die roll against God's Shadow. Going to be on the play. Going to be mulliganing uh, at least to 5 here. Opponent keeping 7. Uh, this is not a good-looking 5 Lavinia. I mean, Lavinia could be good depending on what we're versing. <laughs> could be a bit risky as well, though. Um, I guess we go one more. Uh, I guess we're pressed into keeping now. This is absolutely no better than what we just had. Keep Curious Obsession. Have a hope and a dream. <laughs> Alright, God Shadow, Scalding Tarn, and Pass. We find Misty Rainforest. Crack it. Let's go ahead and get our Hallowed Fountain. We'll play out our Lavinia. Hopefully she lives. All right, opponent, Steam Vents, shocked in, lightning bolt, sad times. Um, well, good news is they don't necessarily know we're on Bogles yet. So, <laughs> this, this, uh, let's just keep them as confused as possible. See if they commit, see if we draw a creature. I guess we should play Windswept Heath because we could go in on Dried Arbor. If we draw like a Totem Armor, it could be good. Is this another Indomitable Creativity deck? 
Mm. Mm. <laughs> All right, play out that windswept teeth. <laughs> End of turn. Opponent hard cast the brazen borrower. Okay. Creeping tar pit. That's a funky one as well. All right, let's uh, let's see what happens here. Try to go in on dried arbor. <laughs> Alpha Authority, uh, I guess we lead on Alpha Authority and see what happens. <laughs> it's it's innocent, it's harmless opponent. Don't don't answer this. <laughs> Snapcaster Mage, uh, target lightning bolt, sad face. Did they tap their lands wrong? They did not. Extra sad. Alright, we'll concede. Okay, so my best guess is our opponents on an indomitable creativity deck. Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, it's, it's just a guess. <laughs> so I guess uh, Gadok Teague can come in for Lavinia here. There's potential for Stubborn Denial to come in as well. We might just take out the Aqueous Form and submit at that. Uh, yeah, we could do with a little help from our deck, but I guess it's a good start. We could definitely mulligan to a better hand there. Alright, let's mulligan. It's probably a bit greedy. Naturally, we see a worse six, so. Alright, keep this five. Bottom forest, bottom. I think it's staggering insight. Then we can have a really aggressive turn two. And hopefully Curious Obsession gets us there. Goodness, turn one. Is this a thought seize? Get fucked, opponent. <laughs> Come on, man. We got five cards. You can't be doing this to me. It's so freaking rude, dude. Unbelievable. Find the bogle. <laughs> a sad time. Uh, I guess we can leave bogle in hand, but... Uh, it's better in the face of our opponent having Liliana of the Veil, Diabolic Edict, something like that. It's worse in the face of us drawing Force of Negation and needing to cast it. Uh, we can, like, play Hyena Umbra here. Pretty strong read on Counterspell, though. Wait for some sort of action for them before we try to play it, or maybe even a second Aura as well. All right, opponent fetched out land, end step, Hall of Storm Giant during our turn. Um, still holding up Counterspell. I guess we can go after that hall. That's kind of nice. <laughs> Let's go ahead. We'll attack. Again, they could have Petty Theft. We're not worried about Brazen Borrower just yet. Opponent. <laughs> you got to be fucking kidding me, man. <laughs> This is garbage. <laughs> Guess we could still draw a hexproof creature. Let's see flip side. <clears throat> Guess we leave beside you in hand. Hopefully draw a core spirit dancer. It's not a core spirit dancer. Not hard castable either. All right, opponent plays out. Consider. End step. Do we really care about this creature? 3-3. Three, three. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on it whenever it deals damage. When it deals damage to a player, if the player has 10 or more damage dealt to that player this turn, they lose the game. I guess we cash this in. I don't know. I don't feel very good about this. We're sort of ramping our opponent too. We could destroy all of the Storm Giants and not ramp our opponent, but I think this flipping is bad. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> End of turn. Colligan's command. All right, get rid of that useless force of negation. We weren't doing anything with it anyway. 
Opponent isn't even casting anything. They're just passing the turn back to us. Tap out so we can cast some cards, opponent. Stop being such a damn wimp. End of turn. Colligan's command. I guess we ditch Curious Obsession. Hyena Umbra on a Spirit Dancer is better than Curious Obsession on a Spirit Dancer. Alright, opponent. Sorcery speed. Consider. Come on. Keep keep casting. Keep casting. Let's go. <laughs> Tassiger. What a freaking bizarre brewery we are versing here. All right, Lightning Bolt face. Also, this art's bugged. The art <laughs> on the card preview is not, though, so you get to see the actual art on the right there. Opponent attacks, knocks us down. All right, we'll go ahead and concede. What a non-event that one was. Hopefully, better things in the final match. All right, fifth and final match. We won the die roll against Piet. That's four die rolls out of five, one here. Currently two and two. This hand looks pretty damn gas, so we're definitely keeping this. Worst case scenario, turn two curious, attack trigger, maybe play the ethereal after. So opponent on six cards. We'll play uh, Bogoloff blue mana because let's be spicy like that. Oh, opponent cycles the street wraith. Second Street Wraith. I guess we're versing Living End this time. Come on, Force of Negation. Be good. Hopefully opponent's going off at sorcery speed. Stomping around. Shocked. This is just Death Shadow. It's odd. <laughs> Find Dryad Arbor. Oh, gross. What a, what a rubbish card to find there. <laughs> Alright, I guess we attack. I mean, we don't know that they're Death Shadow yet. Stomping ground into Raghavan with Street Wraiths. I guess that rules out Living End, though. So, I guess it's Jun Shadow. Uh, we're forced to play Ethereal Armor there, by the way, because if we don't... Uh, <laughs> and we play Curious Assassin, attack opponent jump blocks, and we've only got two toughness. So, all right, Ronin Six taking out the Dryad Arbor is fine. No complaints from me. Please attack. <laughs> or don't. I mean, I guess I don't really care. <laughs> all right, opponent attacks in. Raghavan Trigger. Exiles. <laughs> Rancor. I mean, I guess they can Rancor. That's a pretty good aggression on their part, but all it takes is like Daybreak Coronet and uh, their Ragavan's doing nothing. <laughs> Opponent is greedy as heck. Okay. We've got ball game. What do we find? Mana? Not mana. That's sad. <clears throat> All right, opponent is hard yielding now. Attack them, ignore Ren and Six. Always yes, always yield. Mana, not mana. <laughs> well, we have a good force and negation interaction. Opponent cycles Street Wraith. Still looking, looking for something. All right, Ragavan gets in there. Treasure token and trigger. Finds mana confluence this time. Oh no, he's taking away our mana. What a jerk. <laughs> Alright, opponent Renin 6 active at face. Puts us to 10. We can just kill them after playing Hyena Umbra. If they don't have a blocker, Unholy Heat uh, to their own Renin 6. <laughs> How bizarre. I guess they've got another run in six. Traverse. No thank you. You are not getting Death Shadow. Not on my watch. Uh, we did see other force because if we draw like basic island, we want to resolve Staggering Insight, really. Guess it doesn't matter because Hyena Umbra attack win. Ethereal Armor, sure. Alright. What a bizarre game. <laughs> Get the win. 
Okay, so I found this list on a quick search on Google. Um, Green, Red, Ren, Dragon's Rage Channeler, Elvish Reclaimer, Raghavan, Endurance, Clothus, Pyromancer. I uh, see the lightning bolts there. Uh, Shadow Spear main deck, three Urza Sagas main deck as well. Cyborg, Force of Vigor, um, Pithing Needle, I suppose. So that could be what we're up against. I think if that is what we're versing, we should be pretty reasonably placed. Um, there's always a threat of like Blood Moon as well, potentially. I think like maybe one or two Force of Vigor could be pretty strong. Maybe take out Aqueous Form. And we could subtlety for Lavinia, but I don't think it's that important. It's just uh, submit. All right, uh, opponent on the play. <laughs> we see this no bogle hand with double beside you. Awkward. Opponent miles to six. We'll do the same. All right, this hand's just as rubbish. Keep on mulling. So opponent keeps our six. We're going to go ahead and keep this one. So we'll chuck back the slippery bogle. Think of her playing as safe as possible. It's ethereal armor in case there's like blast zone antics, engineered explosives. Uh, putting back Bogle over Scout. If we get a shuffle effect, it's one more target for force of negation on alternate cost. Opponent Misha's Bobble, trigger. Misha's Bobble was targeting themselves. And there's the Ragavan. Okay. Find ethereal armor. Uh, yeah, like, I'm not mad about that. <laughs> Incredibly nice aura sweep. Alright, opponent Raghavan. Attacks in. No blocks from us. Trigger. They do find the staggering insight. They're not going to be able to cast that one. They do, however, cast out Tarmogoyf. Wow, what is this, like... 2018 again? What's what's Tarmogoyf doing here? <laughs> a very bizarre card. Uh, but it seems to be fast yielding the turn. So I guess we can just attack in without being scared of Force of Vigor. Let's say just yielded to the attack step and we get blown out. Alright, so no effects from our opponent. They're going to go ahead, crack back with that Raghavan, with that Tarmogoyf. Because if they have Lightning Bolt, they can grow the Goyf as well. Uh, no effects pre-damage. So, Raghavan trigger. Finds Forest. Good. Take the Forest away. We don't want it. Plays second Raghavan. Yes, they're just like Mono Raghavan at the moment. <laughs> Two cards in hand. We're definitely winning the race as of current. It's not really what we want to see. Let's uh, throw down. It seems to be hard yielding again. Good indication that they've run out of stuff to do. So we're going to leave Mana Confluence in hand. as a bit of a secret. So our opponent's on 6. We're on 11. We have the slightly bigger creature. They have Lightning Bolts. I guess they could also draw auras that pump their creatures. We can blow those auras up, potentially. They find Daybreak Coronet. Take that, opponent. <laughs> Can't cast that one. And on that note, our opponent Rage concedes, even though the game's not quite over yet. And we go ahead and take the 3-2 in Modern. That's pretty impressive. So, what do we think about the deck? Um, Light Paws was really, really good. Or should I say Floofy Paws is really good. In that one game where we force negated the lightning bolt, unloaded, and attacked for 19 the next turn. Um, so that was really, really impressive showing from Floofy Paws in conjunction with force negation. Um, other than that, I mean, hey, look, the deck seems like it's actually reasonably placed. Maybe I was a bit melodramatic before. I definitely think Modern is extremely powerful at the moment. Um, I don't think there's any doubting that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not going to be upset with the results we got here today. Um, as for main deck Lavinia, I think that was maybe a bit questionable and me trying to squeeze a bit too much out of the sideboard. Um, I think Lavinia could 
better, better served by a different card, such as a fourth Daybreak Coronet, um, or Hyena Umbra, a random Rift's Boon, a random Spirit Mantle, something of that description. Uh, so as for the sideboard, I mean, we didn't really utilize our whole sideboard. I feel like maybe I was over sideboarding in Stubborn Denial. Um, a little fear felt of Counterspell. Maybe Veil of Summer would have been a better place to be than the Stubborn Denial there. Um, Torpor Orb, we didn't see it at all. We, I, I'm not following Modern that closely. I think Money Pile decks will take a fair hit, i.e. Evoke Elemental decks will take a hit post the banning of Urion. Um, so maybe Torpor Orb is less required than what it might have been a month ago. As for the remainder of the cards, uh, Gadok Teague was... I don't know, may, maybe it's a bit of wishful thinking, maybe not. Um, obviously, Gadok Teague has play against Azura's Control uh, with that prismatic ending, against Indomitable Creativity with their aptly named card. Um... And also against Tron. I think as a one-of, it's probably not too bad. Um, could maybe try and squeeze more out of the sideboard somewhere. I think Veil of Servant, Summer Over Stubborn Denial is a good place to start. Um, that way, when your opponent's board in Enchantment Hate, um, you have Veil of Summer as a backup. And also, it can counter counterspell type effects during the turn while replacing itself so i think maybe stubborn denial is maybe being a bit greedy on that we've already got the force of negations main deck um we ran no graveyard hate we ran no creature removal um missing out on both seemed fine to me um <laughs> The Graveyard Hate I would want to run is probably Graf Digger's Cage for Indomitable Creativity decks. The problem with that being is, like Living End, it exiles the creature before it enters the battlefield, so Graf Digger's Cage does nothing. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think we have the basis of a really strong deck. If you guys are a believer in the format, want to see more modern content... Be loud in the comment section so I know. If you want to see green, white, be loud in the comment section so I know. Um, it is a little bit extra effort on my part because I'm filming essentially an extra league a week um, if I'm going to be doing this, but I'll do it if that's what the people want. Um, so I hope you guys had a blast. It was actually a surprisingly quick league, quicker than in Pauper. Um, if you want to see more content like this, guys, uh, please consider subscribing. Like if you enjoyed it. And until next time, everyone, have a great day.